welcome to three things. Our first guest, this is thing number one. This guest took a big gamble back in early 2018, asking us, the 108ers, to co-headline a big live show that will be the crown jewel of SoxFest weekend for the underground media. Fast forward three years later, and people are scurrying to get the impossible ticket that it has become. He's the creator of the Sox Machine podcast, but for us, he's a friend, a mentor in lots of ways, even though he's younger than us. And his girlfriend, Kim, and pup Frankie are eternally invited guests to the beef deck. We'd like to welcome to three things... Josh Nelson. Hey guys, what is up? I hey, love, I love the Tiger King background and the Death Star Moon. I mean, very nice touches. <laughs> We're working it tonight. <laughs> How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. Speaking of the Death Star, so I'm almost done with season three of Star Wars Rebels, and I know there's only ten episodes of season four. So when it comes to Star Wars content, I'll finally be caught up. Uh, and I say that, but then I realize they're releasing a final season of Clone Wars. So, so I have to get caught up with that. I'm, I'm almost there, Treasy. I'm almost caught up with everything Star Wars. So they're, all, they're only like five or six episodes into the new Clone Wars. Uh, okay. And they're, they're all 20 minutes, like 20 or 22 minutes. So you, oh, you, perfect. you can do it quick. Um, yeah, we, we actually did all six, because I didn't watch Clone Wars when it was on. Uh, so I mm -hmm. went um, all six seasons just recently so that the uh the quarantine helped i was able to get through a lot more yeah. because of it but yeah i just i just got caught up there so yeah, whenever you're ready to do that star wars podcast man well, let, let's do it yeah first hot take after watching clone wars and rebels uh they may need to remake the the first three movies uh new yeah. hope empire strikes back and return of the jedi continuity airs all over the place yeah there's a lot of retcons, but you know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of retcon, but it's all right. It, it, it's good. If you like Star Wars, uh, don't nitpick on the animation. Again, I think Clone Wars started in the mid 2000s, so it gets better as the technology gets better. Uh, but I, I like the stories. If you if you love Star Wars and you love the expanded universe of Star Wars, it's definitely right up your alley. All right, beef. What do we got going, man? I I got a drop here. Hold on one second. All right. Oh man. We, Did that work? No. <laughs> was, hey, was that a, uh, I saw something. Was, was that a drop? Was over over nerds. Oh. oh. <laughs> you could have said that. Just do it. We know what, we know what. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, I didn't know. I forgot that we could do visuals. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> this, this is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> All right, next time. next time, next time. It's a feature, not a bug. Well, the, All right. I'm absolutely expected to see J-Mac. The production value is off the charts. I am super impressed right now. All right, Trees, I'm, thing, I'm thing born. number two, thing number two, our guest is supposed to bring a question to this show, and we're going to talk about it. Yes, and I think it's, uh, it's timely because with the rumors about Major League Baseball wanting to play – maybe all of their games in 2020 in Arizona. That's obviously got a huge impact for those like you that own season tickets in Chicago. Yep. But the question that I have, because, you know, beef, you made it clear that, you know, you have asthma, so you have to take this stuff seriously. For sure. My sucks summer. You got two little girls, man, that I know that you do mm -hmm. a great job and you're a great dad. You got to take care of. And Cherizi is just naturally paranoid of everyone. So he's right in his element, staying at home. <laughs> when are all three of you going to feel 100% comfortable sitting in a baseball stadium with 20,000 plus people again? So I think I'd love to go first. Go ahead. I'd love to start. I think it's, it's going to be a long time after we're told all clear. Mm. So when we're first told we're all clear, it's going to mean something. And we're going to start to see life filter back. I mean, I'm actually worried a little bit about when it's all clear, how I'm going to negotiate work mm -hmm. and going to and from the office and what kind of uh, opportunities I'll have to maybe potentially stay home or how mashed up I'll need to be or how much coverage I'll need to be. But I, I would, for me, it's going to be a while. Like I would be surprised if I'm in a baseball stadium in 2020. I think it might be until next year. How about you, my sock summer? I, um, I, you know, I, I would, I would think that 
I would go back myself. Um, I'd probably wear the mask. Uh, I would try to make it back probably on the first game that they did. <laughs> I, I don't. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be very weary to go back. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I just feel like it's. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not totally. I'm right in the middle road. I'm not. I'm not as is. Uh, I don't have the health condition. Well, I mean, I'm fat. But I don't so have I. like I understand like, where you're I, coming I, from. <laughs> I, I don't have like these uh, like unrated like I'm the one that goes out of the house to go pick up all the stuff. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not totally afraid of stuff. But what I did notice yesterday, I was at Target yesterday. There was people that the people that walked in before me, but there was four people, and they were just there to shop. They didn't even take a a cart. They were there to go walk around because they were bored and whatnot. So yeah. that, that, that was the only concern. Like, I'm not concerned about me and what I'm going to do because I know I'm going to do the same thing regardless, wash my hands, make sure that, you know, my face is covered or whatnot. But like yesterday was just, it was, it, it kind of freaked me out because I'm like, these people are just out because they're bored. So yeah. I don't think it's going to be all clear for a while, but I would, I would like to think that I would be probably the first one out of the three of us to go back to the park. But I, I don't, I can't say for sure. How about you, Teresi? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the big things is um, when they finally do have uh, testing available, like the antibody testing, to see mm-hmm. like if you had it and like if you've built up an immunity to it. Um, I'd like to take that because I'd like to find out. Like maybe you know those some of those days where I woke up and felt like shit, it wasn't like pure hangover. I actually right. had, had contracted this and like I just, uh, you know didn't I didn't have a bad go of it, but like I've built up an immunity to it. And if that's the case. Well, obviously, I'll feel much more comfortable going out to the park and seeing games. Um, but in general, like my, I'm more worried about, you know, uh, these guys than than myself. Like, if I went out to a game, like infecting these guys, and then they bring it home to their kids, or or they, you know, or a beef, you know, with with his asthma. Uh, that that would be my concern more than anything. Or like going to visit my parents after I went to a game, and then like. Yeah. And I'm sick. Like that's the kind of thing that I'm more worried about. So I think it'll, yeah. it'll be a while before I'm truly comfortable, but I have a feeling I'm going to go. Like I, I, I will probably, I'll, I'll take precautions. I'll be, I, I wear uh, latex gloves to every game anyways, but so that's, not, <laughs> that's, that's more for bathroom time. But the, I mean like the, the I, I will, I'll take precaution and, and go to the games. The thing I'm, I'm thinking though, is like if they did have games this year, let's say it's in June or something, Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people will be afraid to go. I think I'll be able to still socially distance myself from most people, except for like the yeah. beer. So I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm eager to see what it looks like and then actually get to make that choice. Like that's the thing I'm most excited about right now, which is horrible. Like I might have a choice to go to a game sometime this year. That's that excites me right now. Yeah. And, uh, I guess I'm kind of in the middle. I mean, I've been cheating death since January. I mean, I was in oh, Beijing in January. And then you went uh, on a cruise. And then I went, I went to New Orleans, which New Orleans had a big breakout. Yep. And then I hopped on a cruise ship, which the cruise before us did have someone that had, had been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Our ship did not uh, so far. So that's, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been cheating death. I've been cheating death for the last three months. And at this point, you know, I still go to the grocery store and everything, but I, you know, I wear the mask and I I don't know on how I would feel. I I think I would have the urge to go because I am getting stir crazy. Uh, I think for a lot of people that are the same boat and it'd be kind of nice to just do something normal, but it has crossed my mind thinking about what baseball wants to do and play all the games without fans in Arizona for that plan. And I think that's a terrible plan and I still do. But man, if you brought games back to the stadiums, I just, I I worry how comfortable I am. I worry how comfortable the teams are to ensure that everyone's safe. You mentioned beer vendors. We may not get beer vendors going down the seats. You may have to get out of your seat and go to the beer carts and buy them so they can disinfect your can or your cup before they hand it off to you uh, as they wear gloves and a mask. It, it's just going to be really weird. I, I'm, I'm, when it comes to baseball, I'm just sold that we won't go back to regular baseball life until 2021. 
like 2020, whatever we get, just enjoy and we'll be yeah. lucky to get it. Regular baseball comes back next year, which is unfortunate. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's a good. You could, Josh, you could be um, M. Night Shyamalan's uh, new uh, movie, the fourth in the series of The Unbreakables, The un <laughs> Unsickable. Like, you go through all these things and you're totally unsickable. And, and, and my, and while, you're, like, while you're talking about this, I'm just sitting there thinking, my God, Josh is going to do something stupid. Like, he's going to go walk Frankie and sit down on a park bench. And he's yeah. avoided it in all these really bad situations. And he's just going to, like, touch something. And, like, a bee's going to hit him in the eye. And he's going to be like, ah! And then, like, all of a sudden, he's got COVID. And then it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to just suck. But at least you got to live life before you did it. Yeah, there you go. That's Those are good positive. Happy Those are really good happy thoughts, my sucks. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm the positive one in this whole group. <laughs> I, you know, gonna, I wanted to move on to the third thing real quick, but I got to smack you for something. You're like, I got no and I got no health conditions. I'm thinking the man's blood is basically maple syrup, but he's like, oh, I'm, I'm completely healthy. I'm just fat, no problem. Third thing. Pre-diabetic, but oh so copacetic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Third thing is a question from us, and it's a little more geared towards Josh, but I think we can all bat it around for a second. Uh, the question is this, and it's uh, three. I'm going to go with your question here. I'm going to. Who would you want to convince to become a Sox fan with the sole purpose of starting a podcast with them? The Tiger King. Let's do it. <laughs> Joe Exotic. No. What? <laughs> Not Joe Exotic. That's a great question. Who would I want to convince to be a White Sox fan so I could start a podcast with them? My gosh, you know what? She's already a White Sox fan, though. But I'd love to do a podcast with Mayor Lori Lightfoot after I heard her segment on 670 The Score talking about the Chicago Bears. Uh, she made a comment that she reads many sports blogs. And I wonder, does the mayor of Chicago read our stuff? Because uh, some of the things that she was reading definitely comes from the Bears blogs. Because I, like I read a lot as far as when it comes to the blogs in the mornings and everything. But she's already a White Sox fan, so I guess that's kind of cheating. I don't know who else would I want to – you know what? Just because I think he's cool and he's had such an interesting life, I'm going to go with Keanu Reeves. I think <laughs> Keanu Reeves, John Wick, right, and Nero uh, – Neo, I should say, from The Matrix – uh, have him become a baseball fan. I think he would just provide the most – Deep insight when it comes to baseball and life. So I'm going to go with Keanu Reeves. Excellent choice. <laughs> I was not expecting that shit at all. <laughs> Anybody else want to take their hand at it? I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about how often you guys would talk about Point Break. Like, it, you'd, have to, you'd have to talk about it, like, almost every episode. And I'd be tuned in. I'd tune in for that, for sure. <laughs> Do you think you convince Howard Stern to become a Sox fan? That's the, the question here for you, I think. I mean, that I, I wouldn't want to do something with Howard because he's very neurotic and just odd. Um, I enjoy him, but I don't know if I would want to work with him. But in the same like kind of uh, realm, uh, one guy, local guy, that I would like to at least have on the pod, and we can't because he's a Cubs fan, uh, and we could do a lot of fun stuff with him, is Eddie Barstow. Because the oh, guy yeah. is, he's a renaissance man. He's uh, apparently like 15 years younger than us. And uh, it, it is just, it's like, I, I would like to have that. He, he's just a professional. He's a renaissance he man? Be, Does he like play violin or something that I don't know about? No, he's, no, no. no. <laughs> like he's in, he's in the fart and dick jokes. I mean, that's, that's a renaissance. Like, not, not like the crazy, the crazy shit you see on the internet, like the porn and all that stuff. He's into the, the like the standards. He reminds me a lot of, um, like, an updated Artie Lang slash Belushi, like, type thing. And I think he's limited where he's at. And I think if he got into the, the hot tub with us, so to speak, he would really blossom as an individual. I got it. I got you. I got you. Beef, yeah. who, who would you do? You know, um, only because I want to have a long... Ah, oh, Beef Loaf. ...term dialogue with him and probably scream at me and get upset at me. Did you lose me? Freeze me up a little bit there? Yeah, a little bit. But uh, you're back. All right. Uh, only because I'd want to have a long-term dialogue with him. 
and he's my favorite author, I think it would be difficult to do a podcast with him because he'd probably yell at me and tell me how stupid I am. But I'd want Nassim Taleb. That's why I'd want to convince to be a Sox fan, and then, I, then I'd want to have conversations with him about baseball and get him to apply his uh, different kind of mind to baseball. You're getting hmm. a good cross section of people that listen to Econ Talk and White Sox uh, podcast. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All you guys are going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could, you might get Rick on to listen. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think I'd want Nassim Taleb to interview Rick Hahn, though. He would. <laughs> it would be like when he was yelling at Congress. I was going to say, tell <laughs> what an idiot he is. I'm sure. <laughs> How about you, Jerezy? I mean, I think I would, I would go for Doug Stanhope. I think uh, I just, I kind of just want to drink with that guy, even though it would probably kill me. Um, he's just an overall interesting guy. And I th- like just having him free form for like an hour or three hours, however long the podcast is, just has to be insane. I'd want to be on board for that. I don't know that he watches any sports of any, of, of any kind. So um the only fantasy sports I know he's into is doing a death pool. So uh, we'll <laughs> I'll just have to convince him that baseball is exciting. Well, he's from Worcester. I said Worcester, Massachusetts. So he could be a Red Sox fan. Oh, uh, he could be. He lives in like, where does he live? I don't. He lives in Arizona, right? I don't think Stan holds into sports. Maybe yeah, water no. sports. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe water sports. Oh, my. <laughs> Just from right. my experiences with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll nip this in Thank the you, bud. Josh. Appreciate it. Love you, brother. Look forward to seeing you in person at some point soon, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully that does happen soon. And uh, my last shout out is yeah, Carol Baskin totally fed her husband to the Tigers with sardine oil. That's what I'm going with. Damn you, Carol Baskin. Why did you kill your husband? That bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get sued, guys. You can cut that part out, right? In case she sues you. We want to get sued. <laughs> Josh, thanks a lot, man. We'll talk no to problem. you. Everyone stay safe. Later.